Killing Floor franchise for us has always been about that power fantasy, the feeling that it's almost out of your control and sometimes is completely out of your control and turns into complete mayhem. I've been making Killing Floor since the beginning. We didn't really have like official titles. I did a lot of initial game mode prototyping and just anything to get the game up and running. The original Killing Floor we did with, I think we were 12 or 15 people. Killing Floor 1 was a very grindhouse, dark, gritty survival horror. Back in the day, having access to enough people and enough talent to make what you want wasn't there. We had like three months, maybe four months. There wasn't a lot of polished UI and matchmaking and stuff like that. It was, you know, Leland, you have a week to take each one of these maps and change as much as you possibly can, right? It was, David, you have a day to make each enemy. Bill, you have a day to animate each enemy. So it was do or die to get that first game done. A couple of weeks before we were due to release, Bill and Dave with their art hats on, got the four of us in a room and went, it's got to look better than this. And I was, guys, we've maxed out the credit cards. The bank account has one payroll left in it, and that goes out on Friday. There's nowhere else to go. And we released the game, and people loved it. We went, holy shit. It worked. It was a really fun time. It was a very intense deadline. We were much younger. You know, we were all in our 20s at that time, so we had a lot more energy to do that. Killing Floor 2, we got to step it up a bit. I think we were at about 45, 50 people at that point. David Hensley was the creative director on the project. I was heavily involved in the animation and all the little details that we didn't feel other first-person shooters at that time had. Killing Floor 2 went more of a polished science horror vibe. There's much more weapons and classes. You actually have modern server infrastructure with matchmaking. We had perks, and each one of those perks would have different bonuses for different types of weapons, certain different ways to play. The enemies move faster, the difficulty is more intense. It's its own thing. Well, that was our first real tilt at the consoles as well. I've been a fan of Killing Floor for quite some time. I was working on another game. One of the other character artists says, there's a game I want to try with you guys. And I was like, all right, like I'm down. I like monsters. So during crunch, that artist would be like, you're from Georgia, right? Wouldn't it be crazy if you worked on that one day? So that was my introduction. One of my thoughts when I was given the opportunity to lead the team is that Killing Floor was a bit of a cult hit. I know I wanted it to return to this level of horror, have some cult elements, but become a little more mainstream. So we'd be in the office and we'd be working on dry erase boards and it was just basically Dave Hensley and I kind of talking about what the game could be. And then COVID hit and I was like, we're gonna work remote. So all of a sudden there wasn't just like Atlanta, Roswell as this hub for it. And we could open the floodgates to people that wanted to be a part of the team. I was on the team leading the design for Maneater DLC, and that took about a year, and then I came onto the prototype for Killing Floor 3. You get to start with an idea, make something a reality, and then play it, and say, hey, do we want to iterate on this more, or do we want to try something different? It's just about finding what's fun, what works, really set it up to when we moved into production, we knew, for the most part, what we wanted to make and how were we going to make it. Everything's gray box just the simplest possible representation of each thing, except gun sights, that has to be accurate. Within a week, I had a pretty strong idea of what the teaser trailer would look like when we first announced. It's still feeling like a Killing Floor title, while at the same time elevating it. I think Tripwire's definitely the house that Killing Floor built at this point. There were fun things about the scrappier days. I think as we've grown, we've kept the heart of what makes Tripwire special while also becoming more professional, having access to better technology and more skilled employees. It's been 10 years. Let's step the game right up um, and give people some new challenges. <laughs>